in the middle here. Um, thank you very much for <laughs> organising your thoughts for us today. I Pleasure. really enjoyed that and um, I uh, have really enjoyed we worked through your thoughts and uh, led, us, led us through a very, very interesting narrative this evening. Um, I had a few points uh, I kind of thought might be kind of interesting for the audience. Um, and maybe a question or, or, or two as well, if you'll just bear with me for a moment or two. Yeah. Um, one, one of the things that um, might be of interest to your audience, because you talked about um, housing and affordable housing and a, a strategic approach to housing in, in, in Scotland. And um, one of the biggest issues that um, I see <coughs> coming at us actually pretty quickly um, right now is that the, the, the impact, the very immediate impact of welfare reform and what that is currently doing to the social um, rented sector, both in councils and housing associations, is that their rent arrears are practically going flying through the roof right now. That will impact on any long-term building plans or even medium-term building plans, and everybody's house building plan just now is up for re-debate. Now that has a very, very significant implication for Scotland, not even in the long term, but in the medium term. Um, I also wanted to make, make a comment about um, health and, and social care. And I wasn't quite sure if this is what you meant when you were talking, when you were talking about anticipatory care um, will be difficult to achieve without structural <coughs> reform. Um, there, there actually is structural reform going on right now. I mean, <laughs> the, the government says that it's not redrawing uh, boundaries, it's not reorganising local government. Um, it's not reorganising health boards, but in actual fact, that is exactly what it's doing right now, and, and there's, there's no point in kidding ourselves on about it. Um, the, the, the Public Service Reform Bill to put in place new partnerships for adult health and social care to fundamentally change how we take health and social care forward. Now, that will be um, different in different parts of the country because there will be those that will um, just deal with adult health and social care. There will be other parts of the country where um, like my own, where we, we put in children's services along with adult health and social care, and we will have a very significant partnership arrangement actually starting to be delivered from next April. And that will be a very different way of managing those, those services, those staff, those resources <coughs> that we have in North Ayrshire. Um, and I and my uh, counterpart on the health board will have an extremely difficult, or different, rather, not difficult, but extremely different relationship to the one that we have had mm -hmm. so far. We're working on that just now. Um, I also wanted to say that I've been doing a wee piece of work at the moment around some of the, the, the inequalities um, work that the local government has been doing. And there's actually a lot more happening at scale than we give ourselves credit for. And, and part of the reason for that is actually just because we call things by different names. But when you look at what we're doing and the impact that it's having, there is much more going on at scale than we thought, and I, I hope to be in a position to maybe bring some of that um, out into the public domain, either towards the end of this year or into the start of next year, so there's a wee bit more clarity around that, and I think that, that's probably pretty helpful as well. <coughs> um, I wanted to, 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 to maybe kind of bring my thoughts to a conclusion now, you'll be glad. <laughs> um, first of all, to say that um, one of the things you didn't talk about particularly much was um, employability and the links to the private sector. And we don't do that well in Scotland just mm -hmm. now, certainly not by European standards. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there is something that we, we or there is um, some real hard thinking that we need to do <coughs> to, to really turn all of that in its head and take what I would call a much more whole systems approach and a preventative approach to um, securing employment for as many people in Scotland as we possibly can. Um, and, and the other final point that I wanted to ask you was, um, what do you think um, about uh, what we're doing in local government just now around benchmarking? Because that, that has moved on since, yes, since yes. you were in, uh, yeah, in yeah. the audit position that you held, yeah. um, and, and that has been a big change that we've made this year. Yes, my, 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 my plea in self-defense <coughs> is that there's quite a number of issues I would have liked to mention, <coughs> but I spoke for too long as it was. But, but the housing agenda is a really big one. I mean, I absolutely recognize that. If I think it's fair to say, Graham, that you know, might be doing a bit of work 
under the auspices of Shelter on this um, at some stage. You know, if you want to say anything about that, I'll leave that to you. Well, you're the chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Were you going to go for an announcement at some stage, or just? just uh, just just on the housing thing, Graham said, come in and have a coffee sometime, or whatever that effect, so I did. And then uh, <coughs> suddenly began to realise this was a conversation with a purpose. And the purpose was to ask whether I would be uh, interested in taking the chair of a commission sponsored by Shelter, but operating independently of it to take an objective look at how we might reset the agenda for housing and well-being in Scotland for the latter years of this, this decade and looking into the next decade. And Graham and the folk of <coughs> we wanted the independence. I said, I'm not a housing expert. I, again, flying under false colours. I'm not a doctor, I'm not an auditor. I'm certainly not a housing expert. Uh, and, but to Graham, you were saying that really the view of shelter was to get a truly independent group to look at this. And they've given us a budget for uh, research and uh, a bit of support. We've got a, 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 a project manager who's from the Scottish Government, Richard Grant, who I think is very good. I will look at some of these issues. <coughs> and the, we've met once as a commission. Um, my personal hope is that I'm sure we'll produce a, a, a good quality report. There's lots of intellectual energy and competence in Scotland and elsewhere to do this. But we'll do a good piece of work. But then what happens to it? So I was concerned about you know impact and making a difference. I think what we need to do is, is frame a report that is challenging for all the political parties in Scotland on the housing agenda and get it ready in good time for the political manifestos that will be coming up towards 2016 and actually take whatever we produce to the individual parties and look them in the eye and say, look, these are the issues. Um, we would be grateful if you take this stuff quite seriously. Here are some ideas for this. And by the way, Shelter will be watching how you take this forward, because you've got to have that follow-through. Um, but I absolutely agree. I mean, the, th the, thing that, the thing that I find uh, rather depressing about the whole agenda for social housing is that the problems which, you know, first and foremost, the people in the, in, in the sector are experiencing, the tenants, but also the managers and folk like yourself in, in local government, all these problems were foreseen. You know? it's, it's really not good, is it? Um, and I, I do take your point about the, um, the whole system approach to employability, because I think we've Huge opportunities there, but we're not we're not addressing it. I fully accept that. The benchmarking. All I know is from. I'm sorry, I don't read this stuff anymore. That's a trouble. Well, it's, it's good actually. I don't have to read all this stuff. But I mean, I understand from my uh, uh, occasional conversation with former colleagues of the like that it's really going pretty well now. It's beginning to get some real traction, which is good. <coughs> all over you. Uh, Peter Finney from the Scottish Environment Protection Agency. Um, we've been uh, implementing a system of uh, licensing by managing risk. So I was just interested in whether or not you feel that within our local authorities and even the government, there is an issue around risk, uh, whether or not um, risk aversion is actually inhibiting innovation. Am I the best person to comment on that these days? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a retired gent. Uh, I'm here to give you some thoughts based on 40 years' experience. Um, what I would say is that certainly at the, at the level of politics, there is an issue about um, a reluctance to go away from tried and tested methods because of the intrinsic risk associated of, 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 of possible uh, service failure. And the, the related issue in there is the obvious one, which is worth naming, is the trial by media, which goes on in Scotland. You can have councils, health boards, SEPA for that matter, 
the organizations performing very well if you look at, at the objective performance reporting, but it's, it's an occasional issue which grabs the headlines and follows <coughs> the political debate and the, and the public perception of, of organizations. I think that's an intrinsic risk in Scotland, which has got worse in the use of devolution. I can remember speaking at a conference <coughs> in the lead up to the devolution, and the question from the floor was, you know, what's it really going to mean for managers in the public sector? How are they going to have to change this? And I would imagine that one of the first things they'll have to do is get a thick skin, because it, it was bringing the politics much closer to service delivery, which is good in many ways, because it's more of a reality check. Uh, should be a process of learning and interaction about how service is delivered, but it also means that if something goes wrong, then the immediate kickback is, 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 is really quite severe. A bit off your question now, but I can recall um, in the, the days before the evolution, because I'm, I'm that old, when accountability for Scottish public service was to Westminster, uh, the Public Accounts Committee, that much feared committee now chaired by Margaret Mar Mar Hodge, would have maybe two afternoons a year in the whole of Scottish business. And for a senior civil servant or a chief executive of a public body to be taken to Westminster to appear before the PAC was a bit like uh, you know, a red badge of courage. It hardly ever happened. It's like being struck by lightning. Hardly anybody had ever experienced it. So Howard Mills was down there, <coughs> some Waverley housing in the borders. And I think uh, Jeff Skeep was down once, but there weren't many down. The contrast now, where everything is in the goldfish bowl of the Scottish Parliament and its committees, is really quite stark. And I think that does lead to a tendency, to understandable tendency, to play it safe uh, in Scotland, because uh, failure is not allowed. Sometimes failure is, has to be learned from. In America, someone who's had a failed company is often seen as a resource to make sure the next company is successful. Mm -hmm. We don't operate that system up here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So, I don't know. Yes, I'm not sure if that's where you were going, but that's the answer. Okay, we have time for one more question. Uh, John Walsh, Bob will remember me in a different guise to the past, but. Um, it, well, it's a two-way road. <laughs> but the, the point I'm really wanting to get to is that underlying everything we've discussed tonight is the behaviour of Westminster, the behaviour of our politicians. And I was thinking during your, your, your discourse, there was an article in The, the uh, Economist two or three months ago about Scandinavian government uh -huh. and the fact that there is confidence, there is trust in government. Uh -huh. And what strikes me today is that, to quote William Blake, you know, he who tells the truth uh, with a bad intent is worse than all the lies you can invent. And I feel that we've been taken over by the sound by the, 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 the what you've finessed <coughs> circumstances so that getting corrections to, to policy, getting corrections to the way budgets are applied, has become almost impossible, despite the fact that a lot of good things do happen, but that, in your words, you know, a lot of it is at small scale, and that small scale often doesn't go anywhere. But it's pr primarily uh, a long way of saying, in corporal phrases, we're doomed. Anything <laughs> <laughs> about it. Anything about it. I mean, uh, the folk in this room uh, who know about this stuff much, much better than I do. But if you actually look at trust in the political class, the more remote the politician is from the community, from the individual, the more difficult it is to develop and sustain trust. So by and large, from the social attitude surveys, you'll find that Scottish politicians are more trusted than the Westminster politicians, mm -hmm. and councillors are often more trusted than the, the members of the, of, 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 of further up the further up the pecking order, if you like. Um, so all is not lost, and the scale of government in Scotland is such that we should be able to do this stuff about communicating well with our citizens better than we do at the moment. I don't think we're really effective enough at that. 
Um, it just strikes me that the politics in this country is getting more adversarial. But if I mean, all I all I can do is read read this stuff. I, I I detect that in some of the Scandinavian countries, the politics is now getting more adversarial. The social democratic consensus that was there for the entire post-war period is beginning to fragment, and it's getting a little more you know adversarial. But that's life. Can, can I just add one stuff. point? If the, the, where we see the big problem lies is that most of our, our funding, our budgeting, is all controlled in London now. The, the actual amount of money that's raised locally and capable of being used locally, if you, you look at the context of council tax, it, it's minuscule. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's changing by 2016. I mean, by 2016, we'll be controlling uh, something over a third of... A bit, bit more than 30% of our revenue, so it is changing. And there must be a good good prospect that <coughs> after the independence referendum, if Devo Max comes through, um, people are saying it should be possible to get that up to about 50%. So, you know, we're all on a journey here. Um, so, I, I, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be pessimistic about that. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, thank you very much for your attendance and uh, for your questions. Um, I'm going to invite uh, Richard to uh, make some closing remarks, but after Richard's uh, remarks, I'd like to invite you all for a drinks and some nibbles um, as a thank you uh, to Robert Black and, of course, in honour of Kenneth Mundell. Thank you very much. You'll notice that I am wisely not standing between you and the drink. <laughs> um, but I don't intend to keep you for more than a very brief moment. Thank you very much for coming along. Thank you for coming along in particular to acknowledge the contribution that Kenny Monroe made to sustaining uh, the centre through a phase of its life. Uh, with uh, Ross moving on, we move into another phase of the life of the centre, and we'll be telling you all more about that in the very near future indeed. And thank you finally for coming along and, and engaging uh, with Bob uh, in the way in which some of you have done through, through particularly sharp and, and focused questions, some of which I was actually Bob dying to answer myself. Oh, I'm so a <laughs> privilege to you. Um, thank you very much indeed. We look forward to seeing you at future occasions to Centre uh, at Scottish Public Policy. And as Karen said, please uh, join the rest of us enjoying the hospitality of Glasgow Caledonian. Thank you very much for your time.